Greetings, all. Today, we will be examining the relatively uncommon water-type Pokémon Whalmer, the Ball Whale Pokémon, and its rare evolution Whalord, the Float Whale Pokémon. As part of the Infraorder Cetacea, the members of the Whalmer family are classified as whales and are noted for being amongst the largest of known Pokémon, even at a young age. Both of these creatures possess blue skin on the top halves of their body and have nostrils located on the tops of their body, above their eyes. In the case of Whelmer, their skulls have visibly fused with the rest of their bodies and are indistinguishable when seen from the outside, granting them a fairly round shape and thus explaining their classification as the Ball Whale Pokémon. The bottom half of their body is a beige color with stripe-like stippling on it, and their eyes are fairly small, black dots that are otherwise dwarfed by their large frame. They possess a pair of fingered fins that they use to move slowly through the water, and their mouths are filled with many bristle-like teeth that are designed for catching small life forms such as krill and small fish like wishy-washy. Their evolved form, Waylord, possess a tube-like body shape with a gray underbelly and similar mouth and ocular features, with a major difference in form also coming in their double pair of fins near the back of their body and their tail fins. Their skull is separate enough that a head region can be partially distinguished, but just barely in terms of the position of its fins as it otherwise follows the same drill as Whalmer in being mostly indistinguishable from the rest of the body. Whalmer and Waylord are immense creatures that dominate when it comes to size, but they are thankfully fairly benign creatures that are of little threat to most other water dwelling organisms, provided they are not small enough to be considered prey. While they were once land dwellers in the distant past, as made apparent by the fact that Whalmer in particular will occasionally go onto land out of instinct, these creatures adapted to life in the ocean permanently and are now a staple amongst the oceans of the world just about everywhere, testifying to their ability to handle temperature and depths of just about any normal length. While they are quite large, these beasts mainly feed on small organisms like krill and fish like wishy-washy where they are available, and they can devour enormous quantities of their prey in a short amount of time. In fact, Whalemur feed on about a ton of food per day, and Whalelord are so large that they can swallow entire schools of wishy-washy whole in a single gulp. Because their teeth are adapted to filter out their food rather than grind it up, they hunt by leaving their large mouths open in the water and waiting until they have a good mouthful of food before swallowing. Since this means that water is often swallowed with their meal, they will redirect the water that they swallow into their respiratory system and blow it out through their nostrils to get rid of it. It is noted though, that they may occasionally do this for fun as well, startling others by spraying them with a jet of water that can be harmless and fun at first, but can also be converted into a powerful water spout attack earlier in their life cycle than when most other Pokémon would be capable of obtaining it at. The fact that they eat such large volumes of food at once can be a problem for those that are also trying to get a meal, and in the case of pods of these creatures, it is not uncommon for fishermen to try and chase them off if they are eating all of the fish in an area and leaving none for the fishermen. Despite their imposing size, Whalemur and Waylord are not that dangerous and are in fact fairly simple-minded, which, in combination with their aquatic lifestyles, helps to explain why they get access to Water Veil and Oblivious as base abilities. Their enormous size is enough to scare the wits out of some Pokémon, however, and can sometimes prove to be such a terrifying sight then it makes other Pokémon worried for the physical safety, in turn potentially granting them access to Pressure as a hidden ability. In terms of their overall stats, these creatures don't have much in the way of physical protection or decent mobility, but the blubber that covers their bodies grants them an incredible amount of stamina even at a young age. As such, in the case of Waylord, while their base defense, special defense, and speed stats are all below average for fully evolved water-type Pokémon, their base attack and special attack stats are above average and their base HP stat is extraordinarily high, with Whale Lord possessing the highest base HP stat out of all Water-type Pokémon. Their defenses might not be that great, but these massive whales can take a hit and keep right on going, making them somewhat difficult to take down without extreme offensive power on one side. While Whalemur don't have much else going for them outside of their basic physical attributes, it is noted that they do have a unique way of playing with others that are on the shorelines of the areas they call home. For reasons that are still uncertain, the blubber that coats the bodies of these whales is actually highly elastic, and if these creatures fill their bodies up with water and attempt to go onto land by hopping along the bottom of the seafloor, 
they will noticeably bounce as they hop. This not only provides them an efficient way to move around on land without having to drag their bodies around, but it also provides them a fun way to interact with life forms on sunny days that are otherwise not normally found in the water, including humans. Moreover, the more water that they store in their bodies, the more taunt their bodies become and the greater the height they can reach with each and every bounce, acting like a giant rubber ball. While this can be all fun and games in some cases, it also allows these creatures to make themselves a bit of a threat, as it enables them to utilize powerful attacks like rollout, body slam, and heavy slam to great effect, even if they aren't that heavy. The only thing that trainers need to keep in mind is that these beasts cannot stay out of the water indefinitely, as they will lose all their stamina and perish if they become dried out and cannot rehydrate themselves by taking a dip back in the ocean. Waylord are recognized as the largest Pokemon known to exist, but curiously, their weight is incredibly low for something of their size. The reason for this is that their bodies are mostly taken up by their stomach and lungs, which are filled with a mixture of oxygen and lighter-than-air gases they produce as part of their digestion process, allowing them to maintain and alter their overall buoyancy in the water in order to dive to extreme depths. In fact, a Waylord can dive to as much as 10,000 feet beneath the surface of the water and successfully return to the surface on a single full breath. While their size can be intimidating, what can make them truly terrifying is the fact that these creatures regularly travel in decent-sized pods, and use teamwork in order to get their meals. When these mammals spot a large group of prey in the vicinity, they will swim together and will use their massive bodies to herd their prey into one spot, by leaping into the air, in which they can actually reach fairly great heights due to the low density, and crashing back down into the water. This can usually be enough to stun the prey into submission or completely knock them out cold, allowing for another Waylord to come up and swallow them all in a single gulp. If it isn't though, it is not a total loss, as this act adds some momentum to their movement and thus allows them to speed up just a tiny bit to make it easier to get within the range of their prey. They will do this until every member of the pod has had a satisfying meal, and they are so good at working together and have such easygoing lax natures that infighting over who gets to feed when is virtually non-existent. While this hunting practice might be terrifying to those that they feed on, at least for humans, the actions are a marvelous sight to see, and as a result, Waylord watching is a common practice for both locals and tourists visiting near the parts of the ocean where they dwell, and is definitely something worth giving a try if one has the time. Furthermore, it is noted that these creatures are highly protective of those that are among them, for if they see young Whalemur in their pod being attacked by Pokemon like Sharpedo or Delmice, they will all spring into action and attack the predators in order to drive them away. The only real problem that comes with dealing with these massive creatures is taking care of them, as their enormous size and even bigger appetite can make them virtually impossible for normal trainers to afford to feed. While they certainly might not be among the easiest of Pokemon to take care of, the members of the Whalemur family are adorable and fun-loving creatures that can be a load of fun to play with as long as you can keep an eye on their hydration levels. It might take an incredible amount of food and in turn money to satisfy them, but there are a few Pokemon that can dominate the battlefield as effectively as these beasts when it comes to sheer size alone. If you're looking to acquire one of these massive beasts for yourself, make sure that you stick by the seashore and try not to use them outside of a massive body of water. They might be capable of spending a little time on land, but that will be the least of your worries if you go to fight someone in an arena and your Waylord can't move around much, particularly if it proves to be just as big, if not more so, than the arena you are actually battling within. Thank you all for watching this video. It is always an honor to be able to speak with you all on the subject of Pokemon in a way that brings me great joy and happiness in my work. If you would like to keep tabs on past and future work, click that subscribe button, check out my work on DeviantArt, and don't be shy about following me on Twitter, where you can find pertinent announcements on upcoming work before it is officially posted. Links to both can be found in the video description. If you would like to support my work and help Miguel and I continue to produce more content for you and improve upon our presentation, please visit us at my Patreon page, which you can also find a link to in the video description. Yeah, no. With that, I thank you for watching and I wish you well.